Okay, there's the recording. All right. So, hi everyone. I am go I'm your teacher, Team Ruler Fifteen, aka Mr. C. And today we are going to talk about what I believe are effective language learning tips, um, particularly for for English. So let me go ahead and type the topic name. So that is our lesson topic for today. Okay. <clears throat> now, there are many, many different strategies that people use, but I'm going to share the ones that I believe are the most effective. So let's start with strategy number one. And this one is perhaps the most important one that you are ever going to need. Okay. This. Oh, for those of you who can't join the voice chat, like, you have to make sure you have the English classes role. Um, and if you don't, you need to talk to the mods about that or someone else. Okay, so. So this is strategy number one. Gather comprehensible input from listening and reading. So what do I mean by comprehensible input? Well, comprehensible input is input, be it speaking or writing, that you can mostly understand. So, for example, like you read a book and you find that you understand most of the words aside from a few. That's comprehensible input. Or you listen to a video, watch a video or listen to a podcast or whatever, and you find that you understand most of the words in that video or podcast. Then that's comprehensible input. So why do I say comprehensible input is important? Well, it's important because your brain can only process so much. And by focusing on material that you can mostly understand, the little bits that you can't understand, you'll be able to acquire more easily. And if you try to listen to something or read something that's way above your level, you're just going to spend half the time not understanding what the person is trying to say, and you'll waste time trying to look up words that you aren't familiar with. So don't do that. That's not an effective strategy. So anything that you listen to or um, watch or read has to be comprehensible. And by that, ideally you want 98% of the material that you're listening to or reading to be understood. Like you want to be able to understand the words, 98% of the words. And then the 2%, you can just, you know, uh, acquire as a, as a bit of a challenge for you. Like ideally you want material to be slightly above your level but not too challenging like just only slightly above so that's why i recommend learning comprehensible inputs so don't try to listen to something that you'll only understand half of L listen to something or read something that you'll understand most of and then that way it just makes you know learning the learning some new words easier because your brain will not have to process so much if that makes sense. So that's the first strategy for learning um, for learning any language. Gather comprehensible input for listening and reading. Okay, and there is one thing I need to point out. So some people are probably wondering, do you need a teacher to learn language? Honestly, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether or not you have a teacher. What matters is the input you get. So you need to make sure that you're understanding the material that you're learning from. Well, it doesn't really matter whether or not you can ha you have a teacher. You can have a teacher if you want. But either way, whether you're learning by yourself or from a teacher, you need comprehensible input. And you can get um, input, quality input from either method. So that's the first um, strategy for learn language learning 
So before I go on to the second strategy, does anyone have any questions? No. Oh, did someone have a question? No. Can it be like listening something? Like what? Like listening something, podcasts. Or... Yeah. Yeah, listening something, watching something, anything. Like, or like that. shows. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, excuse me. Yes. Um, we have zero knowledge related to the language that I want to learn. But you said that I don't even know a word. Um, what should I try to listen or what should I, what should I start? If you, I'm sorry, could you repeat your question? Ah, okay, sorry. What I said is, let's just say that I'm a, a complete beginner, that I don't know anything related to the language, that I know, you say, zero things. What should I do in that case? For example, when I want to treat someone that just started. A complete beginner. Okay, that's a good question. So at this point, I would try to find material that's really slow and easy to understand with very limited vocabulary. At that point, like, and there are some, and there are some um, videos and podcasts out there for complete beginners. Like for English, there are some videos that will speak really slowly uh, to you. So that you can understand what they're talking about. Um, so at that point, I would try to find um, material that's really easy to comprehend. Even if you don't necessarily know the words, you want to at least understand the message, the overall message of what they're saying. Even if you don't understand every single individual word. So just try to find really easy material that's slow for you to process, if that makes sense. Yeah, I get it. Thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. So, does anyone have any other questions? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, your... Let's say I'm reading a book and most of the words I'm familiar with. And if I, um, uh, if I see a word that I don't understand, should I translate it? like by looking it up in the dictionary or just go with the flow and understand by the meaning of the other uh, of the other uh, words surrounding it that's actually a good question okay so she's asking if you if you if you come across an unfamiliar word and a text that you mostly understand and should you should you look up the word or should you just keep going and not worry about it? Okay, well, honestly, it depends. Personally, I recommend not looking up words unless you can't just figure them out at all from the context. If you can figure out the meaning of the word from the context, then you don't need to look it up. But if you still don't understand what that word means and it's impairing your comprehension quite a bit, then yeah, you can go ahead and look it up. Just, uh, but you don't really need to have, to, you don't have to memorize the definition itself, like, because you, there are chances, chances are that you'll come across that word again. And if you don't, well, it's not a big deal because you likely won't need it. But yeah, don't really look, don't look up words unless you absolutely must. If you, you try to figure out the word from the context first and words, re, and use a dictionary if you can't figure it out. So the dictionary should be used as a last resort, basically, if that answers your question. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Uh-huh. Hi. Hi, what's up? Uh, good to you. I'm sorry, what? Uh, I have a question, too. Oh, okay, go ahead. Uh, how can I improve uh, my English skills without a partner? Um, to improve your... Okay, so that's actually... That's actually a good question. I'm going to address that a bit further down the lesson, but I'll address some of it now. So you actually don't need to talk with someone in order to be able to acquire a language. Um, it helps. Don't like it. It's not it's not bad. It won't hurt. But you could actually just acquire a language from simply just listening and reading as long as it's material that you can understand. And, of course, having a partner will help with speaking and writing. But for just being able to understand the language, you 
actually don't need to have a partner. But having a partner, you know, having a partner does doesn't hurt. And it will help you practice your speaking and writing. So if that okay. answers your question. Thank, thank you. Thank uh -huh. you very much. Hi. Okay. Hi, what's up? I'm good. I want to ask a question. Okay. Um, what's your question? Actually, I'm trying to learn English for close to six months, but I'm, um, I'm not at the level which I want. What should I do? Sometimes I understand uh, what are say people, but sometimes I don't understand. What should I do? Okay. Um, at this point, if you're not the level you want, then you really just need more input and more practice. So, and I know like it can be frustrating because sometimes you feel that you're at a wall and that you're not progressing any further. What people call this the say the intermediate plateau here. Let me type that in the the chat. Hi, I have a question, so, please. Oh, okay. Just, but hold on. I, I'm answering someone else's right now. Um, so. My question. Okay, so. My question is. Wait, wait, hold what, on. What? Okay. Hold on. I have to answer someone else's question first. Okay, so. If you feel that you're stuck at a wall and, like, your level is not at where you want to be, you just need to keep trying. Like, just keep getting more inputs. Just keep listening and reading. Just keep trying. Eventually, you'll get better without realizing it. It can be hard to see your progress at first, but don't give up. Because if you because you know you don't you don't want to give up. You want you if you really are serious about learning English, you you'd be willing to do whatever it takes. And you just need more practice and more input. So. If you're not improving, you eventually will. It may not seem like it now, but it will pay off in the long run, if that answers your question. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, what was the question someone just asked now? Someone asked another question right now. What were they going to ask? Me, me, me. sorry. Okay, go I ahead. It's fine. Yeah? What daily activity help to improve my English? Okay, so what I would do is try to listen to someone. Try to find, try to listen to just, you know, just some videos that aren't very long, like say 10, 15 minutes of, from someone whose, lang whose English you can clearly understand. Like just like just you know some easy listening uh practice or some easy reading practice, and someone actually posted a website earlier, something called English Easy Easy Stories in English dot com I believe or something like that, but but. Uh, hey, can I can I ask you something? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, hold on one moment, though. Uh, but, yeah, like, just try to listen or read for, say, like, just material you can understand for, like, 15 minutes or so per day. It doesn't really have to be hours. It could be minutes. But, yeah, like, that's a daily activity you can do. Like, just find someone you can understand and then listen to them for a few minutes each day, and you'll improve over time, if that answers your question. There is a good website called Creepypasta. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, uh, okay, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, what was, someone was about to ask another question? Yeah, it was me actually. Okay. I think so. Yeah. So it can be a little bit off topic. It's, uh, it's not about English, it's about other language. Okay. Yeah, so actually I want, um, I will, like, I was wondering if I can learn, learn two languages at the same time, which are, like, pretty identical. It's, uh, it's about Spanish and uh, Portuguese. Okay, so you can you can actually do that. Yeah, you can learn two languages at the same time. You, you, you don't have to learn just one at a time. You can learn both at the same time. Now, 
at first though, I will warn you, at first though, it can be a bit challenging because you're, you know, you're getting input from two different languages at once, or at least nearly at once. But over time, it does become a bit easier. For me, I tried to learn German and Spanish at the same time. At first, I found it a bit overwhelming, but over time, I got used to it. So you can definitely do it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Yeah. May I ask something? You were going to you ask you want to ask something? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm a translator and I know a lot of vocabulary and the words, but when I speak in English You're logging actually, I think. I'm sorry, what I think you cut I'm out a bit there. Always, uh, what? You cut out a bit there. I'm sorry. Could you repeat your question? Yeah. Yeah. I'm an English translator, English to Persian translator. And I know a lot of words and vocabulary. But when I'm speaking, I can't remember all of these words because, because I'm always using these words in uh, writing and translation. So, um, how can I improve my speaking and remembering these words? When I speak, uh, I can't remember all, and I, I always stop. Okay, that's a good question. Okay, so, okay, so at that point, so, like, what's, um, this is actually a common problem for people where, um, they they un they you know they understand and know more than they can speak so um at that point really all i can recommend is that all i can recommend is that you know if you have trouble speaking english um it could mean that you need to do a bit more listening and reading uh, but of course because okay, see here's the funny thing. You actually you actually don't need to speak a language in order to be able to understand it. And you see this with heritage speakers. Like they may understand their heritage language, but they may not necessarily be able to speak it or speak it very well. So you actually don't need to open your mouth in order to be able to understand a language. But that being said, you eventually do want to open your mouth so that you could communicate back. So at that point, to improve your speaking, I recommend doing a lot of listening and reading. And of course, it doesn't help to find a partner to speak with so that you can feel more comfortable speaking. So if that makes sense, uh, hopefully that answers your question. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yes. Excuse me. I have a, I have a question. Uh, what's your question? Well, I'd like to know your opinion about the method of memorization because I used to memorize a lot of different things and that helped me a lot. But I would like to know uh, your opinion. Do you think that memorization can be a good way for you to learn English or any other language? That's actually a good question. Um, I'm actually going to address that. I'll hold on to that question because uh, I will address that uh, under strategy for strategy number four. So I will uh, come back to that question later. And someone can I ask? Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, you said that we can like uh, read books and something like that. And the question is, is it okay to read like books that a hundred years old, or we should read like nowadays books? I recommend reading books that are more modern because the books that you read from long ago may have outdated grammar and vocabulary. So I would recommend reading books now, at least until you're at least until you have a solid foundation of the language. Then you can just go back and read historical books if you want. But if you really want to focus on acquiring the language, then reading books from this era would be the best way to go. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh -huh. Excuse me. Can yes. I ask something. Yeah. I'm preparing uh, for the exam. Is there anything you can guess? 
Oh, I'm sorry, what? Doctor, I'm preparing for the exam. Uh -huh. Is there anything you can suggest me? Oh, okay. Um, well, it depends on the type of exam you're doing. Um, like the IELTS? Yeah, like what, like, like there, there, yeah, like it depends on the type of exam you're doing, but I'm going to assume that it's going to test your spe uh, speaking and writing. Um, in that case, um, I've never taken exams like this, so I can't really, I'm not really sure how to respond to this question, but um, I would focus, like, I would focus more on, to prepare for exams like that, here's what I would recommend. And not just with exams, but with uh, being able to, to uh, communicate in the language in general. I found that listening often helps with speaking and reading often helps with writing. So if you need to improve your speaking and writing, you have to do a lot of listening and reading. So in that case, that's one way you could prepare for the exam. And... Someone also talked about memorization earlier, about words. I'll get to that point in a bit, but I guess I'll address this a bit now. Um, it, it won't hurt to memorize a few key words that you think you'll need on the exam, as long as you don't overdo the whole memorization uh. thing. So that can work. Uh, some Yes, did someone want to ask something? Okay, well... Okay, well, someone asked a question. One of the mods asked a question earlier. Um, and that's actually going to be part of strategy number two. Let me just go ahead and go to the next strategy. And then after I discuss that strategy, I'll keep taking more questions. So I have a question. Okay, what, what's your question? What do you think about Google Translate? I recommend not using it. Um, uh, it's just sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. There are better translators out there, like Deep L. I recommend that one, but Google Translate not so much. Okay. Okay. Uh, why? What is the problem about Google Translator uh, that you see? With Google, it, it's the grammar just tends to be off quite a bit, especially when you go from one language and then back again. And there are actually people making fun of Google Translate online that you know you go from one language and then back again, and then you get something completely different from what you started with. So yeah, yeah. it's just not that accurate. <clears throat> so I don't recommend using it. I get it. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to... Yeah, Cambridge Dictionary is pretty good. But... Yeah, you can translate phrases, though. That's okay. Yeah, that's fine. But try not to translate entire sentences. Just, no. Okay. Um... Yeah, and plus, it's, it's as the mod just said right now. Like, whether or not it sucks, it's translating everything you see is not really going to help you. You, that 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 has to that really has to come from within. You have to be able to understand what you're listening to or what you're reading. Depending on the translator, all the time is just going to hinder your you know hinder your comprehension. Okay, so yeah, yeah, exactly. Deep L. I recommend that one. If you have to use a translator, I recommend that one and not Google Translate. Well, I have to finish recording the lesson before I you know. Uh, Post it, yeah. I'll post it on YouTube. How how to detect if if my if my pronunciation is a bit off? Okay, um, actually, that's a good question, but I will address that later because, uh, that's under strategy number six. So, uh, just hold on to that question for now. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about strategy number two. Don't focus so much on grammar. And I know that this to some people this is going to be shocking, but don't. And there are reasons why. First of all, the grammar that you often learn is not not all of it, but 
uh, a lot of it is quite useless. Do you need to know what a noun is? No. Do you need to know what the present perfect continuous is? No. You just need to know how to use them effectively. And that comes from just listening to how natives use these concepts and then emulating that or, you know, copying that. So don't focus so much on grammar. It's not really going to help you. And there's another reason why. What I found is that with, with children and adult language learners, when you correct them on some grammatical mistake they've made, it often doesn't work. Whether you tell them directly that they're doing something wrong or whether you're copying what they say but with the correct grammar, it doesn't really work. And there's a reason for that. What I found is that your brain acquires, your brain will acquire whatever, lang whatever feature of a language it wants whenever it wants to acquire that feature. And you can't force your brain to acquire, say, the subjunctive in Spanish or uh, tenses in English early, um, you know, as early as you want. And that's just not how it works. So you can't force your brain to understand something that is not quite ready to understand. Even if you consciously understand the rules, that doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to be able to use that concept effectively. And again, I bring up the issue with the Spanish subjunctive, where a lot of people learn the rules but find that the subjunctive is more complicated than they thought it was going to be. So you, grammar doesn't grammar can only do so much, and it tends to be more useful when you already understand most of the language. Like if you're an advanced student, then of course you, learning grammar will help you. You know, will help you polish your English or whatever language you're learning in both speaking and writing. At that point, grammar will actually help you. But before that point, not so much. You can't really rely on it to, you know, help you acquire the language because that's just not really how language acquisition works. And uh, that's another thing. That's another good point that someone brought up just now. Not every native, not not all natives are going to know how their grammar how the, how the language, how the grammar of their language even works. Like, some Spanish speakers don't know what the subjunctive is. Some English speakers don't even know what the present perfect continuous is. It doesn't stop them from using it effectively. So you don't even need to know what the grammar is in order to be able to use it, if that makes sense. So, so just, so if you are going to learn grammar, hold off on that until you're, say, advanced. Then it'll actually mean something. But before that point, no. You should just not focus on it. Or if you are going to focus on it, limit how much you focus on it. So, like, if you need to understand what the difference is between this phrase and this phrase, then, yeah, gr learning the grammar there can help. But other than that, no. It's, if you're going to learn grammar, it should be focused on the function of grammar rather than just, you know, learning verb paradigms like, you know, conjugations or declensions of nouns and stuff like that. No. So basically what I'm saying is that grammar is overrated when it comes to language learning. It can work, but only in the right ways, if that makes sense. Okay, so... And another thing. Even if you do try to study all the grammar you can, there really is no time to think about it while speaking. There just isn't any time. Like, with natives, for example, we don't think about the grammar of English. It just comes out naturally. We don't think about it. So, you don't really have time to think about grammar a lot when it, when it comes to speaking. Now, with writing, it's different because you have time to craft your message. But with speaking, no. It's just not going to work. But, of course, you're going to need grammar in order to be able to write efficiently. But in order to be able to speak, not so much, especially when natives don't even follow the, the standardized grammar that you find in textbooks. They often don't follow it. And, of course, textbooks can only cover so much grammar. They can't cover every possible feature of a language. And they often cover, like, a very limited um, amount of the language. So basically, don't prioritize grammar so much is what I'm trying to say, especially if you're not an advanced student. But that's really strategy two. So before I go to strategy three, does anyone have any questions? Teacher, I have a question. Yeah? 
Uh, which of the um, books um, do you do you uh, do you prefer? Which uh, which um, Oxford or Cambridge? Honestly, which one? I don't really I don't really use either. I use Merriam Webster, but I but if for those two, I think either works just fine. I don't really have a preference. Okay, I, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? And hey, try to get a question. Uh huh. Okay. Well, I try to get a lot of input. I mean, most of the day, what I do is just watch a lot of uh, YouTube videos or, you know, try to watch some movies at Netflix. Mm -hmm. But um, when it comes to reading, I don't do that quite often. And I don't know if reading could help me, help, help me, sorry, improve my speaking or, or my other skills because that I never do that. And I don't know if I'm missing something or if I'm not. And so getting to my max, max potential by not doing that. So, yeah, I want to know it's completely necessary to start reading a lot to get a good level in speaking, because that's what I want to reach. Okay, that's a good question. I think I touched on this a bit before, but I'll go ahead and elaborate on it. So, you don't need to read a lot in order to be able to speak. And you'll find that there are some native speakers of of any language that can't read at all, yet they have no problem speaking. So reading isn't needed for speaking, but reading is needed for writing. So if you want to write effectively, then you do need to read a lot. But for speaking, no. You just have to listen a lot for speaking. But for reading, uh, you don't need to read to speak. Okay. Uh, I understand. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so does anyone have any other questions? Uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. I posted it in the chat. Uh, it's a bit uh, specific. And do I need to learn how to construct uh, conditional sentences if my level of English is intermediate? Oh, yes, that question, yeah. Okay, honestly, no, I don't think you need to. If you're advanced, then yeah, you'll definitely want to learn that. But if you're intermediate, no, not really. Because at that point, it's not expected for you to... Um, that's a rather complex topic, so it's not expected of you to be able to understand that at an intermediate level. But at advanced level, yeah, you'll definitely want to learn to uh, construct conditional sentences. But if you're intermediate, it's not really all that important. So intermediate students should focus on tenses most most of the time. Uh, I wouldn't. I honestly wouldn't even say tenses either. Uh, maybe simple tenses, but not the more complicated ones. I think tenses and moods, like the conditional or the subjunctive, that I think all of that should be uh, for the advanced level. But that's just me. But yeah, I don't. I personally don't think you need to focus so much on uh, conditional sentences or even on tenses at the intermediate level. Okay, thank you. Uh huh. Okay. Um, does anyone have any other questions? Um. Hello. Hi. Uh, how can I improve my uh, accent? Because everyone knows my country, and <laughs> I don't want to know that. How can I improve my English and my accent? How can How can I do that? Thank you. Okay. Um. Actually, was gonna. I'll touch on that now, and then I'll get more in depth. Uh, I'll talk about that topic. Uh, more deeply later. So, if if you're highly advanced and you're fluent, but you just want to get rid of your accent, I, I would go and seek an, an accent coach that can help you reduce your accent. Um, and I would also focus uh, on how natives say things. Like I would really f try to listen to how natives pronounce certain sounds and emulate that. So those are two strategies I recommend if you want to, you know, at least reduce your accent. So the two strategies would be find an accent coach and pay really close attention to how English speakers pronounce certain sounds and mimic that. 
And of course, which of course is a given, like doing a lot of listening will help you uh, pronounce things better. So that's, that's what I would recommend. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, can I ask another question? Yeah, sure. Like, Excellent, but I want to improve my uh, pronunciation. So, what can I do? I do some like I speak with. I open a video, then I speak with natives and I repeat them. But I think really. Oh, uh, I forgot the word. <laughs> Efficient. Okay. So, well. Okay. Well. Um. If you are trying to listen to natives and, you know, trying to focus on their sounds, that might not necessarily be enough. Like, there, there are just some things that you may never get rid of. So, at that point, I would, it's as I, it's as I told the other person, I would just try to find a professional. Or, if you can't afford a professional, there's actually one good um, channel on YouTube where someone who's not a native speaker of English actually manages to sound almost exactly like a native speaker. And she shares her tips here. Let me see if I can find her really fast. I'll put a link to her channel in a moment. Let's see. Okay. Okay, copy this and paste this. Uh, let's see. And then... Okay, so if you want to find some a free resource, that where I posted here is a good place because she this is a woman who went through who actually went study with accent coaches and who really focused on learning the sounds of English in order to be able to speak as a native would. So she manages to sound almost exactly like a native speaker. So if you want a free resource, then I would go and, you know, watch her videos. And there are others videos on, uh, on YouTube where you can find, uh, you can, where you can learn pronunciation, but she's a good place to start. So I recommend watching her videos. Okay, if that answers your question. Thanks. Mm hmm Okay. So, and that channel I put also has some other acts, uh, other language learning tips that I recommend. So, yeah, she's just a really good channel overall. Um... So just start with her if you really, really want to focus on getting rid of your accent. Or at least trying to reduce it for the most part. Okay, so let's go with strategy number three. Study phrases, not individual words. So what do I mean by this? Well, when you think about it, language, our, the language in any, uh, our speech or writing or whatever in any language is often made of formulaic chunks. That is like just units of words, not exactly individual words, but units of words. So for example, in English, you have, let's, let's, we have the sentence. We have this sentence. So this is our simple sentence. I want to go to the beach. Well, that's actually made of several phrases. So you have, I want, and then to go, and then to the beach. So it's really just, it's really just a sentence made up of several units. And a lot of our language is like this. So that's why I say it's important to study phrases, because if you study phrases, then you're really acquiring, like, basically much of the grammar that the natives are to use. And you'll be picking up conjugations or declensions without even realizing it. You just, you, you look, you've studied the phrases so much that you just know what's right and what's not. So if you study a lot of phrases, that will really help your comprehension. So don't focus so much on individual words, but more on phrases or even sentences. 
but mostly phrases. Because because uh, because when you think about it, all you just have to do is string the phrases together in in language, and then you have a sentence. So let me think of another example. So you have this, and then this. So let me go ahead. Here's another simple sentence. She is writing a book. So that's really three different, uh, three different uh, units. She, and then is writing, and then a book. So if you memorize things like that, then you know, then you know you'll ha you'll find you know speaking and writing easier instead of just focusing on. You know, every single word in that sentence. She, then is, then writing, then a, then book. No. If you separate into units, the fr if you use phrases, then it's easier to process these sentences and to output them in return. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. The, better, the, the, one, the best way to learn to speak as a native word is to study a lot of phrases. As many phrases as you can. Or, like, yeah, like, just study as a lot of them. Not exactly memorize them so much, but, you know, just, you know, just try to learn as many as you can through natural context. You'll just pick up some phrases here and some phrases there. So, yeah, that's the case for all languages, yeah. All languages are like this. Well, ex well, even, yeah, yeah, actually, I'd say all languages are like this. Even for the ones with, that have really long words because of a lot of affixes in them. Even they have units, because you're really just putting a bunch of units together to make those really long words. So even those languages aren't any different. Like Finnish. In Finnish, you have a diff you, you attach affixes to a, a root. And it, it's, it's, it's the same process, but you're not, it, the only difference is that the words aren't exactly, the units there aren't separated, but they're still units. And for Korean, yeah, Korean, Chinese, any language, really. So, all languages are like this. Regardless of whether they're agglutinative, like Finnish, or very, like, or they have a lot of separated words, like Vietnamese. So, again, try to learn, try to think of phrases. Try to think in phrases instead of individual words. And you'll find, and you'll find, you know, acquiring the language easier, if that makes sense. Okay, so that's number three, strategy number three. So before I go to strategy number four, does anyone have any questions? No. Sorry. Okay. So now we're going to talk about something that someone uh, talked about earlier. And... Should I pin the strategy messages? Oh, yes, I should do that. Yeah, I'll do that in a moment. Okay. So, here's strategy number four. Don't memorize vocabulary. And I know, again, this is going to be, this is going to be shocking for a lot of people, but I, I personally don't even bother memorizing vocabulary. When I'm learning something like Spanish or German, I don't bother. I've uh, for me that doesn't work because because it's again it's not like your brain can just memorize a word perfectly and then just output it whenever it, we're not like machines we don't really do that and there are only so many words you can memorize at any given time because you know your working memory can only process so much so don't memorize vocabulary so much and plus you want to you plus if you try to memorize vocabulary, if you try to memorize vocabulary, you might not understand all the nuances in a word for a word in natural context. Like if you just focus on the word itself rather than on the context from where you learned it, and you might miss out on some important meanings. So to me, I think it'd be easier for you to just folk on uh, just like pay attention to the words that you come across in. Con and different contexts, but instead of memorizing them, just focus on exposing yourself to them as much as possible, and eventually you'll just pick them up. So, I don't really think memorizing yeah, vocabulary listen. is all that efficient. Um, but that being said, if you still do need to memorize vocabulary, 
flashcards are a good way of doing it, particularly ones from places like from you know from websites like Anki. Like, let me type that up. Like they they used a uh, a spaced repetition technique to help you memorize your flashcards effectively. So if you need to use, uh, so if you need to memorize words for whatever reason, then you can use flashcards. Flashcards are effective. But again, try not to focus too much on learning vocabulary. Yeah, especially in lists. In lists, no, no, that's just not going to work. If you have to memorize them, use try to use something like flashcards. But lists, no. It, it just, it just no, no. Like what I find is that when it comes to learning something very, mu when it comes to learning something effectively, repetition works wonders. Because if you come across something again and again and again, you're going to eventually m pick it up and memorize it. And yeah, and that's the thing. It, you can memorize vocabulary, but sometimes you might forget what you've learned. So that that's the issue here. So at that point, again, so at that point again, I would try to um, expose myself to context where I'm going to, you know, come across whatever word I want to learn a lot. And again, if you really do need to memorize the vocabulary, just use flashcards. Like, particularly ones from the place I mentioned. So, and it's okay if you, and even if you do try your best to, whether or not you memorize vocabulary, even if you do forget the word, it's okay. Because you'll come across it again soon. You don't have to worry about memorizing every single word you come across at that point in time. You'll come across it eventually, and if you don't, that's okay, because it's not an important word anyway. So, yeah. Just don't focus so much on memorizing vocabulary. Memorizing in general is not really that effective. I mean, it can be effective, but it, it but only like only in certain ways. It can only do so much. If you try to rely on memorization a lot to learn a lot of words in whatever language you want, it's not going to work very much. Oh, there are there are other websites too. Like you, for example, there's Quizlet. I use Quizlet. There's Anki, there's Quizlet, someone else said Cake. There are plenty of websites with flashcards. Those, those are the ones I recommend. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much what I recommend. Um, just don't focus on memorization so much. Um, use it. I rec. I I personally use memorization as a last resort. Um, personally, I focus on just trying to learn the language in this natural context, and then, and then eventually, I just you know, eventually, I just pick it up. So that's how I do it. I don't really focus on memorizing so much. But that's my. T but that's my tip, if that makes sense. Um. So before I go to number five, does anyone have any questions? Yes, I do. Um, let's say I was reading an article and I came across uh, words that I don't understand, and then I looked it up. It up. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, should I put it on Anki for a later or something like that, or just leave it like this? You know what I mean? Yeah, I I understand yeah, what you mean. Uh, you can use. Like, if I think that that this word is going to be useful for writing rather than speaking, but oh wait, wait maybe I should use this word more often. Oh, then in that case, yeah, I recommend just putting it in the flashcard, not in the list. No lists, no, but in the flashcard, yeah. I would recommend doing that. If you think you're good, if you think you're going to need that word later, then yeah, I would make a note of it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, I have a question. Huh? Um, uh, do you know English grammar in use by Raymond Murphy? Uh, no, I I'm not familiar with that. Okay, it's by Cambridge, so I just 
want to have an idea is it good or not for English grammar. Okay, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so someone asked, speaking of which, is a good way to study phrasal verbs to phrases or simply focus on the meaning? Uh, honestly, I think, I guess through, I guess through phrases would be a bit better, but like the, but focusing on the meaning doesn't, doesn't hurt either. Like, I don't think, I think either works really. It, it just depends. Um, like. Because I covered, I remember covering phrasal verbs at one point, and I focused on the individual meanings of them. Like, that can work. Of course, you, or you can also just learn it through phrases, too. That works, too. I don't think either, I don't think either is better than the other. Let's see. How about learning collocation set words? Yeah, that's basically what I was saying earlier. A normal native speaker knows every tense in the, No. No, not even close. Um, some do, but not all of them. In fact, in fact, most don't even know about the grammar of their language. In fact, you know, recently, <clears throat> well, like, like I didn't even understand. Like, what what was it? Say a year ago, I didn't even understand what the present perfect continuous was. I was like, what was that? What's that? And some non-native was like mentioning how he learned that grammar from you know, playing games, and I was. And I thought, oh, so that's what it's called. Like, so we we natives don't exactly know everything there is to know about our language. We may know how to use them, but the these features, but we don't exactly know about them. If that makes sense. So why are you studying it? Well, first because a lot of people have this idea that if you study grammar, you can acquire it, and that depends. That depends. If you're an advanced student, then learning grammar will actually help you because at that point, you pretty much know the language. You just need to refine how you speak it or write it. But before that point, no, grammar is not going to help you acquire the language. It won't hurt, but it won't help either, if that makes sense. Do natives learn tenses at school? Yeah, but we don't, it's not really, we don't really focus on it that much. So yeah. Okay. So before I go to number five here, does anyone have any more questions? Excuse me, I have a question. Yep. Um, it's been years that I started to learn English, but I still get some problem with listening. Like, um, I listen to a lot of English stuff, but I don't know why my listening doesn't improve. Uh, for example, you may, you as a native may say something uh, mm -hmm. that I know the meaning, I know how to write it, but when you say it, I can't understand it. Like, I don't know what's the problem, actually. It's, um, do you have any advice for it? Do I need to do some uh, specific practice for that? That's actually a really good question. Um, I guess it's. I guess I can't. I guess yeah. I guess there there are times where you try to do as much listening as you can, yet you still lag behind in some contexts. I guess. I guess at that point you do. I guess I would recommend doing some, doing some practice, but I'm not exactly sure how to go about. Well, it's not exactly sure how you would go about doing that doing the practice um yeah i'm not really sure how to answer that question actually i guess i guess at that point i guess i would just recommend that maybe maybe try to it might be it might be that whoever it might be it might be on this it might be a speaker issue because there are just some dialects or accents that you just may have problems understanding so at that if that happens, so you might have to just find someone else to listen to, like at least someone with a more neutral accent. Um, that can help. Or, or at that point, you might just have to, you know, keep keep trying to listen, and eventually it'll just stick. Um, I guess I don't really know how else to answer that. Really, if that answers your question. 
It's all right, thank you. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, yeah, some people are asking good questions here. Um, I'm not a ling. I don't claim to be a language learning expert. Not nor is anyone calling me one. It's just that um, there are just some situations here that I'm not familiar with that learners have pro that have have issues with. Okay. Um, yeah, or watching videos with subtitles can help. That that works too. That's that can be effective. Um, and that, but the, I only recommend doing that if you can't really understand much beforehand. And another thing, uh, if you if you are going to use subtitles, I recommend not using subtitles, at least not at first. But if you are going to use subtitles, make sure that they're in your target language, because if you use them in your native language, it's just going to distract you from actually focusing on the language you're hearing. So if you have to use subtitles. Use them in your target language. And yeah, as someone made a good point here that I did talk about earlier, but I will go ahead and say it again. It, it really isn't necessary to understand every single thing in a conversation. All that really matters is that you understand the overall message. So even if you don't understand every single individual word, if you focus on the overall message, then, you, then you've technically comprehended what the person was trying to say. And over time, you will start to learn pick up on individual words but for now you should try to focus not so much on understanding every single word like you know stopping and trying to process it in your head no just focus on just letting the language run through you and trying to just um get an overall message from what the person is trying to say and then over time you'll just get better and better at listening um to uh, to the individual words so it's really the overall message that matters more than the individual parts, if that makes sense. And if your listening still falters, well, you, I, I, the only thing I can recommend is just to keep practicing. I know it can be frustrating that you keep practicing and you hit a wall at some point, but you just have to keep trying, really. I, I can't really uh recommend i can't really say anything else it's just you just have to keep trying and trying especially if you want to folk get used to a certain dialect then yeah it's something you're just gonna have to put up with but eventually it's easier it'll get easier like for me when i was learning spanish and i'm still learning spanish but when i was learning spanish earlier uh i, I was used to hearing since i live in the states i'm used to hearing latin american spanish but particularly mexican spanish but See, when I tried when I first tried to learn Castilian Spanish, I I was thrown off by it because it sounded quite a bit different from Latin American Spanish because um the the Spaniards pronounced their Z's and soft C's like the th sound, the soft th sound. So like it, it took me a while to get used to that, but over time like again, you get used to it because because you know your brain will just learn will learn all these differences so i can understand spaniards almost as easily as i can understand latin americans now so i have no problems understanding both so i have because i've listened to a lot so you eventually pick up on what they're saying even if it may not seem like it now you'll get it eventually okay Okay, if you... Sorry, I have a question. Oh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, you know, uh, when some people have problems just of uh, trying to convey what they're trying to say, like, for example, they think of something and they just say whatever it's without structuring, without structuring, structuring what they're trying to say. Do you have any tip for that? That's actually a really good question, and that's going to – that's that's actually what I'm going to discuss in for strategy number six. Or actually, you know what? Why don't I just move that up, and I'll focus on – yeah, why don't I just address that now? So I'll just make that strategy number five. So let's go ahead to answer his question right now. Uh, regarding like how you're structuring your sentences and if you know you screw up on some 
you know, with tenses or anything like that. Well, here's my strategy for that. Honestly, I would say... Don't focus so much on speaking or writing. And I say this because, to me, what matters more is... To me, what matters more is... Oh, wait, hold up. That's not the one I wanted to type. My bad. This is the one I wanted to type. Let me edit that. Sorry, I meant something else. Something completely different. There. Don't focus so much on sounding perfect. That's what I meant to say. Okay, so... What I mean by this is that you can technically mess up your message regarding tenses or declensions or aspects and still be understood. So what I'm basically saying is this. Try not to focus so much on being so accurate because over time you will get better with accuracy. But for now, what I think you should focus on is being able to communicate. So even if you can't speak perfectly, you should be able to try to at least you should try to under try to make people understand what you're trying to say. So, even if you mess up the tenses, if people understand what you say, well, at least there's that. And then over time, you'll get better and better as you, you know, expose yourself to more of the language. If you focus so much on accuracy, you'll just be trying to stumble over your words and making sure you find the right words, and that will just slow down your communication. But if you focus on just communication in general... Even if you don't get all the tenses or the clensions or aspects right or whatever, then at least you'll be able to communicate. You'll be able to be understood. And that's what you want, to be understood. So even if you don't, you know, even if you don't get everything right, you want to at least be understood. Because over time, the more you do this, the better you will be at speaking. Because I've come across some speakers, non-native speakers of English, who still, you know, have issues with grammar, but I understand them, and that's the important part. So, it, it really, so, what I'm saying is that communication matters more than accuracy with regard to language learning. And even the, for example, the, Span the AP Spanish board, the Advanced Placement Spanish board in the U.S., they focus on communication. Not so much on accuracy, because they want their students to be able to exp to express themselves fluently, be it through speaking or writing, even if they aren't perfect. They, the AP Spanish board focuses more on communication, and that's the important thing. And over time, communication will improve your accuracy. So what I'm saying is that you should really focus more on just being able to speak with people or right than to just then on being accurate and then over time you'll get better if that makes sense so that's what i so to answer that question earlier that's uh eventually it's really just comes from being able to be more accurate comes from doing a lot of listening and reading but don't focus so much on accuracy focus more on communication that's what i that's what i would recommend Okay, thank you. Uh huh. And yeah, someone said here you'll learn subconsciously if you if you you know do a lot of repetition. So that's one thing. Okay. Okay, and so for strategy number six, and let me rephrase that better because that was not phrased very well earlier. Okay. Let me let me just type it this way. I think that will Okay. Strategy number six. Don't over prioritize speaking or writing. So what do I mean by this? Well, if you focus so much on trying to speak or write when you're not ready for it, then you will come across problems. Like you'll just you'll just find yourself unable to say or write anything. And what I mean by this is that you can't you can you can't really have outputs without input, but you can have input without output, which is what I was saying earlier. You can understand the language without being able to speak it. 
So if you want more output, that is speaking and writing, you have to do a lot of listening and reading first. Input. So input makes output, if that makes sense. So you should focus more on listening and reading before you try to speak and write. If you try to focus too much on speaking and writing early, early that's not going to be good for you. So don't over-prioritize it. Instead, just focus more on listening and reading. Because, again, you can't have output without input. So the more input you get, the better your output will be, if that makes sense. So that's strategy number six. Listening and reading it should be prioritized over speaking and writing. Okay, so... Before I go ahead and do before I go ahead and summarize everything I've said, does anyone have any questions? Okay, what should be the ratio of reading, listening, and speaking and writing? Okay, um What should be the ratio? Honestly, I don't think there's a proper ratio at all. Oh, you mean, oh, you mean, oh, okay, I see what you mean. Actually, that's actually a good question. Um, I say most of your time should be, do, should be doing reading and listening. Speaking and writing comes l later. Eventually, you'll get to the point where you can just speak and write without really thinking about it. For me, when I was learning Spanish, I had trouble, you know, coming coming up with sentences Sometimes even while writing, but the more I listen, the more I can, the more I find myself speaking more easily. So, reading and listening should, that, that should take up most of your time. Speaking and writing can come later, like when you're advanced, or so, or close to that point anyway. Okay. So I hope all my points made sense. I'm sorry if I wasn't able to explain them all very well, but uh, those those are all the points I have. So to recap, let me just copy these from these pinned messages. Oops. And while I'm doing that, I will read what the – because some people have actually made really good points throughout this lesson. Exactly. The If you increase the amount of practicing and comprehensible input, then, yeah, you will definitely get better. It's just a matter of practice. So if, if, you, so if you find yourself hitting a wall, you just need more practice. It can be frustrating, I know, but eventually you will get over that wall. And, of course, if you want to practice your speaking, there are plenty of places on the server here to do that. That's why we have these voice, voice chat areas. So, you can try that. But, yeah. Again, listening and reading should take priority. Um, and then, over time, your whatever language you're trying to learn will just come out on its own. Yeah, that's another good point. The more you read and hear, the bigger your vocabulary and grammatical rules will be. Because that's the thing. That's why input is so important. You get to see how natives actually use the language instead of just the, the standardized version you find in textbooks. You'll, you'll, get, you'll, you'll hear a lot of that. You'll, you, the more you hear, the, more, the, better your, the better your comprehension will be. So that's another good point. So to recap. Strategy number one, gather comprehensible input for listening and reading. Speaking and writing at this point is not really all that important. Strategy number two, don't focus so much on grammar. 
So in other words, don't focus, don't focus so much on like, don't try to, don't expect to learn tenses and master them when you're at B1. That's just not going to happen because, and this happens in pretty much any language, like for Spanish speakers, for Spanish learners who try to learn the imperfect at like, say B1 or B2 and expect to learn it. There. No, no. The imperfect takes a long time to acquire. Same with tenses in general. So do not over do not focus so much on grammar. Grammar should ideally come later in the learning process. Strategy number three, study phrases, not individual words. So try to focus on as many idiomatic expressions and, you know, sentence parts as you can rather than just focusing on every single individual word and trying to make sentences from that. Because a lot of our language is formulaic. We just put units together. And by doing that, you, by focusing on these units, you actually acquire a lot of the grammar. Okay, so strategy number four, don't memorize vocabulary. Memorization is, can be helpful, but only in certain ways. It's quite limited in effectiveness, at least, at least in my experience. Like, for me, I learn better if I just get, ex if I expose myself to a word over and over again, instead of just trying to memorize the definition right then and there. There are times where I do occasionally memorize, but normally I just focus on exposing myself to the word through repetition, or with any words, really. Okay, um, strategy number five. Don't focus so much on sounding perfect. Again, the focus should be on communication. Even if you don't sound perfect, you mess up a tense or you forget an article. As long as you as long as people understand you, that's the important part. Because see, the thing is that you can try to be for some people it may not exactly be possible to sound exactly like a native. For others, sure, they can sound very much like a native, but so for some people and not so much. So it's as a non-native, it's not expected of you to sound exactly like a native. So, and, and if you really want to focus on, if you really want to learn the language, you should focus more on communication. So even if you aren't perfect, at least you can understand people and be understood in return. So communication matters more than accuracy. And strategy number six, don't pri over-prioritize speaking or writing. Because, again, you can't really have output without input. You need to listen and read a lot before you can speak and write. Listening will help with speaking. Reading will help with writing. And, of course, there are plenty of ways to learn a language. It's like, for some, someone here said he, learned, he started learning English by playing video games. That's an effective way, provided that what you're playing is properly translated so that's one way to do it and and you can you can also learn from watching youtube videos from reading blogs or books or anything like that as long as whatever you're learning is comprehensible you you can learn from whatever material you want and someone and a few people have posted some good points here um yeah, that's a good point. If you try to translate everything in your head, you're just going to miss whatever someone's talking about. You, you should just focus on, just let the language run through you and focus on finding out what the main point is. Eventually, you will pick up on all these words. So you should focus on, ha on getting the, the gist of whatever someone is trying to say. But of course, ideally, you still want your language to be, your input to be comprehensible. And, and of course, if you really want to, and another thing I forgot to mention that someone brought up just now, if you, if you, if, again, if you can't afford an accent coach, another way you can get better is that, you know, there's a, there's a, actually a channel on this website, uh, sorry, server called Judge My Accent, where you could just post recordings there, and then natives can rate you on how you're, on how you speak. So that's another way to improve your pronunciation. But I would worry about improving your pronunciation when you're advanced. But if at that point, before that point, there's really no point. 
But if you're advanced, then yeah, you can focus on just trying to improve your pronunciation. Because pronunciation, better pronunciation makes you more easily understood. Okay. Um, and yeah, another important thing. Don't be too harsh on yourself. Because language learning takes time. It's not something that can happen overnight. It can take months or even years, depending on the language. And depending on what your mother tongue is. It can take months to years to become fluent in a language. And it can take even longer than that to become highly proficient to the point of almost sounding like a native. So you need to be patient. Eventually, you will get there. Okay. okay, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, some people trying to start a conversation with, um, but uh, you don't don't end it very well. So, what's your suggestion to start a conversation? I'm sorry. What was your question again? I don't completely understand. How to start a conversation with a stranger? <clears throat> oh, oh, so you so you want to know how to start a conversation with a stranger? Yes. Okay. Um. Well, this is where coming learning phrases comes in handy. Like, try to learn things that natives commonly say, like, Hello, how are you? What's your name? What do you like to do? Things like that. Those are, if you need to memorize things, those are the things you should be memorizing. Phrases to help you communicate with people. Or how to order something at a restaurant. Or anything like that. That's when you should, those kinds of phrases you should learn. That That's what I would recommend so that you can you know, start conversations with strangers, if that makes okay. sense. Yeah. Thank you. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, question. Yeah, what's your question? Uh, how much uh, can I, like, become a, a native speaker, like a native speaker, like a write, write a writing and maybe talk like American accent, like that? How much? Like uh, two year, maybe three. Oh, okay. So that's what you're asking. Okay. Um, it's it honestly depends on the language. If the language is grammatically similar to your own, then it won't really take that long. Um, provided the pronunciation isn't too different. But if it's a language like like if you're English and you want to learn a language like say, uh, Korean. Uh, then it it could take it's definitely going to take years before you can actually start sounding like a native. It it really depends on the language, so there's no I'll, I'll fixed amount. Arabic. Yeah, or okay. Arabic. Okay. Yeah. It really depends, but generally, I'd say like it takes a few years, like maybe two or three. Okay. Thanks. Uh huh. If you allow me, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been trying to communicate here in the in a server, but I am how can I say uh, a bit shy about my accent. You know, uh, I work for an international company, so I'm con constantly communicating in English. But here in the server, I don't do that because I know what you say, I know how to say, I know how to pronunciate, but I'm always uh, shy about my accent. Do you have any tips, any hint for this case? Okay, so this is, okay, so that's actually a good question. If you don't be, what I would say, what I, excuse me, what I would recommend is not to be so self-conscious about your accent. I know some people, I know it's hard for some people, but if it, but if you if you if you um let yourself be ruled by that fear then you'll just be too afraid to speak so and because that's what i had an issue with at first at first i was afraid of saying anything because i thought oh no what are they going to think of me like are they going to judge me on my grammar or my accent or anything like that but honestly if you should not worry about that you should just focus on being understood like it's okay not to sound perfect no one is expecting you to sound perfect if you're not a native so mm -hmm. Just don't worry about it so much. Focus on just 
being able to speak. And eventually you'll be more comfortable with it. Even if you make mistakes, you, you'll be like, oh, okay, I made a mistake. I'll just learn from it. And so, yeah, just, just don't focus so much on sounding so perfect. Focus on just speaking. So, because eventually your accent will improve over time. It may not go away. It really depends on the learner. But you just, but just don't worry so much about it. I see. I see. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks. Uh huh. Okay. Tim, I got a question too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, um, well, excuse me for a second. I, uh, I lost my train of thought. Okay. okay. What I was uh, talking about is that most of the time when I try to speak, I do it through apps. And when I have conversations, they always start like, hey, how are you? How are you doing? How, how old are you? And I don't know, I would like to get some recommendations or what should I say? Because, yeah, I know some phrases, I know some basic phrases, some you know, conversation starters, but I think that they are very limited. And because of that, I also, I know, I just would like to know more. Or I know where to start. Yeah, sorry. Uh, okay, so you're asking uh, how you can learn more phrases. Is that what you're asking? <laughs> Well, okay, I'm going to be honest. I had another question, but I, I for, totally forgot what I was about to say, so I made up something. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, it's okay. Um, well, if, well uh, if you want to learn more about... I'm gonna, see, the thing is that every language has its idioms. Like English, Spanish, uh, German, French. Every language has its phrases and expressions and all that stuff. So... The, some some programs are quite good about teaching you about the phrases, but if you but if you want to but if you find that limiting, it helps to go um, <clears throat> listen to native speakers in 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 a, in a comprehensible environment. Like you want to understand most of what they're saying, so it helps to go out and find native speakers that you can understand, and then you know eventually you'll pick out some of the phrases that they're saying, and then use those yourselves. So it's really about just exposing yourself to as much native speech as you can or native write writing whatever applies yeah thank you very much uh-huh okay um so oh. does anyone have any other questions could, could you could you write it up in vc chat environment you 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 said uh about environment this is a very interesting phrase uh, okay so what i said was i'll just paraphrase it what i said was it's like con can this not no can this environment something like that comprehensible yeah yeah uh, con there you go yeah, that's it. Could you could write up? <laughs> yes. So I'll make... write it too. Okay, so this is what I said something like this. If you want to learn as many phrases as you can, immerse yourself in an environment with comprehensible input. Ah, okay, thank you. Uh huh. What if you can't? I have so... another question. Okay. Uh, well, to answer, before I answer that question, to answer what someone just said, it's. Uh -huh. you, I know it can be hard to find some material that uh, that's suited for your level. It's frustrating, but uh, but if you if you keep trying, you'll eventually find something that you can understand. I know that you can't always find perfectly comprehensible input. Sometimes it's difficult because out like for Spanish, for example, sometimes there just isn't enough material out there for beginners. So at that point. I would just keep trying to find something that you can at least mostly understand. Even if it's even if it's not like say ninety percent or so, at least try to find uh, input that's as comprehensible as you can get it to be. Because sure. eventually you'll you'll get better and better at it. So just try to find material that you can at least understand somewhat, even yeah. if you can't find perfectly comprehensible input. For sure. Thanks. I appreciate uh -huh. it a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what was someone going to ask? I have a question. Okay, yeah. Uh, um, what 
do you think of having Anna different and learning from him without it being exactly a class? Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. Because you're getting quality input from someone who's willing to speak with you in the language. It doesn't have to be a teacher, as I said. As I said earlier, like you don't need you don't really need to have a teacher. Like having one doesn't hurt, but having one but not having one doesn't hurt either. Like you could learn with or without a teacher. It doesn't matter. The what matters is how you're the it, the quality of the input you're getting. So yeah. Having a native friend or for a speaker or a native girlfriend or whatever or living with the host family, uh, it you know, that's really helpful because you're getting a lot of input from them, provided that they're willing to, you know, repeat things for you and not speak so fast. So, yeah. Okay. That's great. Thank you so much. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh... Oh, yeah. See you later, Dark Salo. Thank you for coming. Okay, so does anyone have any other questions? Okay, well, if not, then that's really all I have to say. So basically, I cannot stress how important comprehensible input is. Because if you try to understand something that you only understand half of, that's going to be frustrating and ineffective. So try to aim for something you mostly understand. While having a little bit that you don't understand to challenge yourself. Because you want to learn something new. So ideally you want what you understand to be like somewhere like 98%, somewhere around there. But... But you can get away with 95%, but 98 is uh, really more of an ideal percentage, from what I've read on the topic anyway. And yeah, yeah, you can play, yeah, as I said earlier, game, you, can, you, can pl you can learn languages with games. You can learn languages with pretty much any medium, provided that you have comprehensible input. So it, it really just, again, it really just depends on the input. It's more about the input than the medium, but... Yeah. But okay. Um, no one has any other questions. That's really it for this lesson. And thanks to the mod for pinning um, what I've recapped in the lesson here. Again, look at the pinned messages if you want to see all the strategies for uh, my, the strategies that I believe are the best for learning languages. So focus more on input than on grammar and memorization. Input is everything. Even if you do try to, even if you still insist on studying grammar, you cannot go without input. Input is the key to everything. Get as much of it as you can. With or without grammar, get as much of it as you can. Okay. Yeah, that's actually a good point. Like, there isn't one single specific American accent. There's a general one, but there are other ones within America. I have a I have a pretty neutral one, but even though I live in the South, I have a neutral one. But yeah, there are plenty of accents here. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, I don't mind helping people. I think next class I'm going to continue with my lesson on phrasal verbs because I only covered some of them. There are, there are some others I wanted to cover, but there are so many that I couldn't cover them all. So next time I'll just do that. But anyway, let me just type this up. Yeah, I can see how the southern accent would be hard for people. I I live in the south, so of course I'm used to it. I'm even used to what we call AAVE, African American Vernacular English. I can understand that too. And you will definitely hear that in the south over here. Um but yeah, like yeah, I I'm used to it because I live here in the south. But I know that not everyone is going to understand it. So Okay, so the important part 
that you should of this lesson. The important part of this lesson, the key takeaway is this. Focus on input first. Grammar and memorization can come later. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Input is the most important part. Let me change that to comprehensible input, actually. So input should be prioritized above everything else, particularly comprehensible input. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know if we have any Americans with a strong regional accent, but I know I'm not one of them. <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I live in Texas, but I have a very neutral accent. Um, but yeah, um, if that's it, then if, if no one has any other questions, then that's really it for this lesson. Hopefully that helped you guys. Again, don't give up. You will eventually get you will eventually learn English and don't focus so much on sounding perfect. Focus on communication. Communication is key. Thank you so much. Uh-huh. Oh, what's your question? Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, because one of the guys in the chat was saying that it's good to practice using online games, but for at least for me, when I try to do that, playing, for example, Team Fortress 2 or Counter-Strike, most of the people just make fun of my accent or because I'm Mexican. And I don't know how can I get, for example, into a real life situation when I can speak English without caring too much about that people. Because, yeah, I, I try to ignore them, but when they are the majority, I don't know what to do. That's actually mm -hmm. a really good question. Yeah. Okay. So if you come across people that make fun of your accent, forget them. They're not important. And anybody who would make fun of your accent is just not a nice person in general. You just don't let them affect you because no one is expecting you to I mean some people if some people do then they just don't understand how people under how people learn language, but don't but don't let people like that get to you. If you have an accent, it's okay. It's okay to have an accent. And sometimes sometimes people can can find having an accent cute or or you know, you know, attractive. So, it's not always a bad thing. It's okay to have an accent. If you want to reduce your accent, it's fine, but it's just know that as long as you don't as long as you speak clearly and pronunciate well, even if you still have an accent, at least you can be understood. So, really, if you want to get rid of your accent, you can, but it's really not that important. So, don't let people tell you that you... So, don't don't let people affect you, the ones who say that your accent is just weird or that they make... Or the ones that make fun of you for it, because they're not important. They're not important at all. And if they're making fun of you for doing that, then they're not really people you want to be around. So just ignore them. Just keep doing you. Like, you know, if you have an accent, so be it. It's okay. So be it then. Yeah. And thank you very much. Uh -huh. that's, that's really helpful. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Any other tips to avoid stuttering and dead words speaking? Um, that's actually a good question. If you find yourself stuttering in conversation, it might help to practice what you some of the things you want to say beforehand. Like just for any conversation in general, that can help. So you could just practice talking to yourself at this point. It's not going to help you get better at using the language, but it will help you, you know, prepare. It will help prepare you for conversations that you might have. So you can do that. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. As Jeff said, your accent really isn't that strong. It's noticeable, but it's not that strong. In fact, I actually like your accent. So, I like when people have accents. I also like when people don't have accents. I don't I don't really care whether or not you have an accent, and plenty of people won't either. But for the ones that do, forget them. They're not important. Okay. So, I will. 
Okay. Okay, so um, does anyone have any other questions? Well, I really just wanted to say thank you, and that's all. Sorry. Oh, no, no, you're good. And actually, regarding your question earlier, I did. I remember posting a, 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 a what was it, a channel that leads to someone who, a channel called Hadar's Ax, Accents Way English with Hadar. She, you know, even even though she, even though she has a really, really good pronunci pronunciation for a non-native speaker, she actually doesn't even worry about it that much. She, she, <laughs> to her, to her, uh, having a not not having an accent isn't that important. Communicating is. She just wanted to sound more like a native speaker, which is fine. But she doesn't focus so much on having an accent. If she has one, so be it. She does. She honestly doesn't worry about it. And yet, she manages to sound almost exactly like a native speaker. So, it's funny how that works. So, yeah. So, yeah, accent or no accent, it doesn't matter. It's okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm Mr. C. Uh, same, same, uh, same. Actually, let me just go ahead and post my channel right now. But before I stop the lesson, does anyone have any other questions? I uh, actually have oh yeah, go ahead. Uh, actually, I am uh, I am good in uh, conversation, uh, but I uh, I have a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, when I'm talking to people, they can understand me, and I can uh, talk uh, not very good, but they can understand me. But sometimes I forget uh, to using grammar, like uh, present perfect, uh, past perfect, uh, these tenses. So uh, sometimes it, uh, that makes me uh, can't express what I want to, to say. So uh, do you have any tips or uh, how can I solve this problem? Okay. Um... At, at this point, I would just really the only thing you can do is just the only thing you can do is just do a lot more listening. Um, if you're stuttering or you know making you know grammar mistakes and all that stuff, I would just recommend like just continuing to listen more to language to help yourself get better. Um, it, again, and it's okay to it's okay to make mistakes, but if people, but if because of those mistakes, people don't understand you, then yeah, you do need to. You really should practice a bit more with listening and reading, if applicable. If you're like if you're trying to text someone or whatever, but yeah, at this point, it re it really just means that you might need a bit more practice. So if you just keep exposing yourself to the language, you'll get better at it, and then people will understand you more easily. <clears throat> Uh, in texting, it, it's not a big problem because uh, I have a time and I can search for uh, or thinking about what I want to say or the grammar which uh, should I use. But in conversation, it's like I have to speak uh, and uh, I don't want to stop a lot when uh, when I speak with another stranger or another uh, person. So it's like I forget to, what what should I use. I my memory can. To get what should I use in in some uh, in some phrases or some situations? So is that a like a memory problem, or uh, I have to practice a lot? Or it might it yeah it might be it, it's hard to understand it's hard to address that. Sometimes it might be a confidence issue where you just where you just um, stumble over your words. Even though you know, even though you can form words and sentences, you may stumble over them anyway. Sometimes it's just an issue of not having enough practice. It really depends. So, if it's because it's because if it's because you're nervous, I don't know if if it is, but if it is because you're nervous, then just relax and don't focus so much on trying to sound perfect. Because again, no one is expecting you to if you're not a native. And if it's not because of confidence, then yeah, it's really just a matter of practicing more. Because the more the more you practice, the the better you'll see, the better you'll get. So. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.
Okay. So, yeah, that's it. Oh, yes, your, what is your question, Tomato? How to do better word selection in conversation? Mm, like, are you trying to... You mean, like, finding the right words to say? Um, I guess, I guess, I, I honestly don't know. I think doing better word selection, I, I don't really know how to, uh, I guess, like, I guess at this point, well, actually, actually, as I said earlier, it might help if you, if you have problems finding the right words and find the right words in a sentence or anything like that. It might help to practice some of what you say before you say it. Like when you talk to yourself and you know you practice the language, some of the language you use, that might help prepare you uh, for conversations. Um, but of course, if you still have problems finding the word, then you really just need to, it really just comes down to having more practice with listening. Um, yes? Um, do you think it's good um, to review for from time to time everything that I already know? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's fine. Yeah, like there's nothing wrong with wanting to, you know, come just review what you. There's something wrong with reviewing what you already know. Yeah, to like it can help prevent you from forgetting it. So yeah, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. Okay, let's see. Someone asked one here. Actually, I know a lot of vocabulary, but sometimes when I'm talking with someone, I forgot which uh, which words I learned. What should I do? Okay, um, it might be because you don't know that word enough, or it might be because you're nervous. If it's because you're nervous, again, like just don't don't again don't focus so much on sounding perfect because the more you try to sound perfect the more you'll just stumble over your words um but if it's not because of that and if it's because um you just for some reason forget the words you learn it might be it might be because the words in your passive like it might be passive vocabulary for you but not active vocabulary what i mean by that is that you uh, you recognize the word but uh, but not enough to where you can just use it in conversation whenever you want. So at that point, it's just a matter of getting more exposed to the word. So it's really just a matter of exposure. The the more you get you get used to talking in public, the better you get. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's. Yeah, the more you, you get used to conversing with people, the less likely you're going to worry about grammar, the more easily words are going to come to you, especially if you've done a lot of input before, uh, gotten a lot of input beforehand. So yeah, that's definitely good. So don't, don't let, don't let fear of speaking, like, don't let fear of speaking get you down, or writing, because in Spanish, I've made dumb grammatical mistakes. But yet, I still try to communicate with people, so so I don't I don't worry about it that much. I used to worry about it, but not anymore. I make mean, like, and the thing is that even children, even children make grammatical mistakes in their language. Like even they they say dumb things like in English or Spanish or any other language, but they don't worry about it. They just simply keep speaking, and eventually they get better. And even, yeah, and even natives make mistakes. Granted, they do tend to make different types of mistakes than non-natives do, but they make mistakes nonetheless. So it's okay. It's okay not to have perfect grammar. No one has perfect grammar. Even I don't have perfect grammar. Even the ones who know, even the ones who are, say, linguists or professional teachers in English, even they mess up with grammar occasionally. No, it's we're not perfect. We're not machines. We can't get everything right 100% of the time. So it's okay to make mistakes.
And another thing, regarding mistakes, there's one thing I should have mentioned. When I say, when I say, um, okay, so whenever, if you're wondering how effective correction is with regards to mistakes, it's not that effective. I'm not sure if I already touched on this, but I'll touch on it again just in case. Because you'll find that with children and adult language learners, even if you correct them on something, they're still going to make that same mistake until one day you just stop making it. Their mistakes go away over time, but not with correction, more with input. So really input will help make those mistakes go away, not correction. So if you, if, so if you try to correct a child or an adult language learner and they still keep making that mistake, it's not because they don't not, it's not because they're dumb or that they're not listening to you. They just their brains just haven't acquired that in, you know that input at that point in time. So they're just not ready to acquire whatever you're telling them. Eventually, they will acquire it. So it's okay. So it's okay to make mistakes. And, of course, correcting, for, for me, correction it isn't really effective unless, unless it's something that the person, unless it's something that the person should know. Like, if they accidentally say something offensive, then, yeah, you'd want to correct them. But... Or if they, you don't understand what they're saying, and then they tell you, and then they try to explain it a different way, and then you correct them there, then that can help. Those are really the only two times that correction can be effective. Otherwise, it's there's just no point in doing it. Yeah, eventually, because the thing is that even if you do know your mistakes, even if you do know your mistakes, or even if you know about rules in general, that not, that won't necessarily stop you from knowing the mis from from making the same mistake. So, just so it's really, so really just try to get as much input as you can. And eventually, at least most of those mistakes will go away. Okay. Um, you want to hear how my Spanish sounds? Oh, I don't even know how to. I don't even know how to. Okay, I guess I can say some of it. Um... Hola, me llamo Chimruler15, soy de los Estados Unidos, tengo 25 años y soy um, estudiante de universitario. That's so basically I said, hi, my name is Chimruler15, I'm 25 years old and I'm from the United States and I'm a university student. I know my Spanish probably didn't sound... I know I had pronunciation issues there, probably, and I had a, you know, a little... I might have phrased a few things in, uh, weirdly, but... Yeah. Eso fue genial. <laughs> oh, really? But sí. you're a Spanish, a Spanish speaker. Can, we can understand you. Sí, sí, de hecho. Yeah, yeah we can. Yo no entendí sin ningún problema. Yeah, I did too. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and yeah, um, yeah, thank you. That's really reassuring. <laughs> um, but yeah, I try, I try to focus more on being understood because even if I phrase things weirdly, at least people can understand me. And then, it, and then I'll just, and then eventually I'll learn how natives say it, and I'm like, okay, I'll say it that way instead of this way. So it's so it's okay. It's not to sound perfect. It's okay to make mistakes. I have a question. Yeah. Um, um, you have think about do one class to do one class in Spanish for Spanish speakers to how to learn English. I would love to, but I, I, my Spanish is only like say B two, so I can't. I don't think I'm quite ready to do that yet. That would be so cool. Yeah, it would be. I would love to. Like, I'm trying to, I, I, like, my comprehension is, like, getting closer and closer to C1. But, yeah, I still need more practice before I can do that. But I would love to do that. Yeah, that would be really cool. Mm, yeah. Okay. Um. But, you know, I'll just, I just need to keep practicing. I'm getting there, though. Uh... 
let's see, someone said, should I listen to a podcast or read something? As Yeah, you can listen to or read whatever you want, as long as it's something you mostly understand. Okay. Portuguese is easier for those who speak Spanish. Yeah, they're both grammatically very similar, so yeah, that's not surprising. And as a, and because I because I've learned a lot of Spanish, I can actually understand some Portuguese, not when it's spoken because the pronunciation is very different, but written, yeah, I can understand a lot of it. Hello. Hi. Okay. Um. Articles are rather elusive for me. I still do mistakes. That's okay. That's okay. That is okay. That is okay. Because the article, the thing about articles is that they are actually really hard for non-natives to acquire. And the ones you can get to the point where you make where you don't make mistakes most of the time, but there'll always be those few instances where you screw up with them. Yeah, it, yeah, articles are pretty difficult for non-natives, and understandably so. Honestly, honestly, to me, the best way to acquire them is to just simply keep listening. Like, just get as much input as you can. Eventually, you'll use them correctly at least most of the time. I know, like, because, and because you know, I, I've had university professors who, who are non-natives who still make mistakes with articles. But the thing is that they make mistakes very infrequently. So, like, only rarely. So, as, but other than that, their English is just fine. You know, if you ignore their pronunciation. So it, it's okay. It's okay to make mistakes with articles. Yeah, I'm I'm like an intermediate Spanish student. Yeah, you, you're an intermediate English student, really. Okay, um... What is English most grammatically close to? German and Dutch. Because English is, I believe, a West Germanic language. So yeah, it has grammatical similarities with English, uh, German and Dutch, and it, like you could, if you if you look at some basic German and Dutch languages sentences, sorry, you could, as an English speaker you could probably understand some of them. Like in German, ich bin hier is I am here, obviously. So there are plenty of grammatical similarities, but of course there are plenty of grammatical differences too. Okay, um, someone asked another question. Oh, wait, no, I think, no, never mind. How difficult do you, th do you think it is to, how difficult is, do you think it is to, uh, pass the T-O-E-F-L test? Honestly, I don't know, because I'm honestly not familiar with those kinds of tests, like the T-O-E-F-L or any other exam like that. So I really wouldn't know. I don't know about those. So I am i can't really answer that question, I'm afraid. Okay. But if someone else could answer it here. Like, maybe they could provide some input on uh, their experience with that. But yeah, that's, but yeah, so many good questions and so many good points all around. This has been a really meaningful discussion. I'm glad I was able to record all of it. So those who weren't able to watch can just watch uh, on their own time. Okay. As for that question that someone asked earlier, yeah. Um... Yeah, it's basically as Jeff said. A complex sentence is a sentence with an independent clause and at least one dependent clause. And a compound sentence is a sentence with two independent clauses. And you could have a compound complex sentence with two independent clauses and at least one, de one dependent clause. So yeah, that's t that's hopefully that answers your question. But anyway, that's really it for this lesson. So if no one has any other questions, I'll just go ahead and stop the lesson here and let you guys go. Okay, so thank you all so much for being here and for providing such useful input and asking really good questions that I, was, I wasn't able to answer all of them, but I was glad to be able to answer most of them.
But anyway, again, it's okay not to be perfect. Everyone makes mistakes. Just focus on communicating and on getting input. That's the key. Uh, that's the key point of this lesson. But anyway, I will stop recording and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. See you later. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, teacher. Ciao. Thank you. See you later, alligator. <laughs> You're welcome. Alligator. <laughs> see you later, alligator. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 See you all later. We love Bye. you. <laughs> That's perfect.